So the first example we're going to look at tonight is in my live lessons GitHub repository in the Java 8 folder. And it's going to be the EX28 example. So we're now in the EX28 project. Let's take a look at the EX28 file. This particular example shows several different ways to implement the singleton pattern. Hopefully you're familiar with the singleton pattern. It's in the famous Gang of Four book. And the singleton pattern provides a single point of access to an object without requiring the use of global variables. And it also makes sure that there's just one instance of that object. And we're going to use a bunch of different ways to implement singleton. And we'll talk a bit about that. One is by using a Java atomic reference. Another is by using a Java volatile variable via something called the double checked locking pattern. I'll talk a bit about that. There's also something called the holder idiom. And finally, a Java enum. And all these singleton implementations will also be tested concurrently. So let's start taking a look at this. We're going to have a test program where you can parameterize the number of threads per singleton. You can see here that we're going to have two, but you could make it 10. The output gets a little, a little hard to decipher after you have more than just a few threads, but you'll see what it does in a second. And then we have a static main method, which is the entry point into the test program. First thing we do is we make ourselves a random number generator that we're going to use to wait for a random amount of time. You'll see how that gets used in a second. And then we're going to go ahead and create an array list, which will be used to hold a list of threads. We're going to create a bunch of threads, and then they're going to be accessing singletons to see what the behavior of the singleton is in a thread safe and way. It's worth pointing out that the original version of the singleton pattern as defined in the Gang of Four book did not deal with threading or synchronization. So it's chock full of race conditions. And this example here shows a couple of different ways to address those race conditions. So what we're going to do is we're going to create some thread objects. We're going to iterate for S max threads per singleton. So in this case, twice. And then we're going to go ahead and make ourselves some different singleton implementations. And you can see here, we're going to make something that's going to be the uh, atomic reference singleton. We're going to make something that's the holder idiom singleton, something that's the volatile singleton, and finally something that uses the enum singleton. And we'll take a look at these singleton implementations in a second, but I just want you to see the overall design of the program. We're making a new thread, and that thread is going to run a task, and that task is going to do something. We'll take a look at that in a second. And it's going to take the appropriate singleton as a parameter to this factory method. So we're going to give it the atomic reference singleton. We're going to give it the holder singleton, the volatile singleton, and the enum singleton. Like I said, we'll take a look at those implementations in a second. And we're also going to name these threads something that make it clear which type of singleton we're dealing with and also which iteration we're dealing with. Is it the zeroth iteration? Is it the first iteration? And so on. So let's take a quick look at run task. So run task is going to take in a random number generator and the singleton instance that we're going to be accessing. And then we're going to use the current threads get name method to get the name of the thread. We, we gave it a name when we created the thread. So you'll see what that looks like. That's just to have nice diagnostics. And then we're going to sleep for a random amount of time between zero and 10 seconds. And you'll notice we wrap this up with a little exception laundering mechanism that enables us to not have to surround that code with try catch statements, which is kind of ugly. Once we finish sleeping for a sh short period of time, we then ask the singleton, what is your current value? And the very first time it's going to return null because it hasn't been initialized yet. We're going to print that value out. And then we're going to go ahead and set the value of the singleton. This is a field in the singleton. So singletons can have fields. That's kind of their whole purpose. So we'll set the field to be the name of the thread. And then we'll go ahead and we'll up, we'll take a look at what the value of this field is after we've updated it. And that should be what we just gave it. Now, keep in mind that these singletons are going to be accessed by multiple threads concurrently. And so they're going to have to be thread safe. And they're also going to have to make sure that the singleton is created in such a way where it can deal with multiple threads. And you'll see that there's some interesting variations there that will show up when we start to run the program. So that's a quick overview of this part of the program. 
Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and walk through the different singleton implementations. 